All right, buckle up. Because the story behind the Iran-Iraq war isn't just any dusty old chapter from a history book. It's a wild ride of politics, power plays, and good old-fashioned human folly. Once upon a time in the late 20th century, two Middle Eastern neighbors, Iran and Iraq, decided that peaceful coexistence was overrated. Why settle for friendly borders when you can have a good old-fashioned, drawn-out, eight-year conflict? This epic saga kicked off in September 1980, but the seeds were sown long before. You see, Iraq, under the ambitious and cunning leadership of Saddam Hussein, had been eyeing Iran with more than a little envy and suspicion. Iran, on the other hand, had recently undergone a significant transformation, the 1979 Islamic Revolution. Ayatollah Khomeini and his merry band of revolutionaries had ousted the Shah, a U.S.-backed monarch, and established an Islamic Republic. This sent shivers down the spines of the region's more secular rulers, including Saddam, who feared that Khomeini's revolutionary fervor might spread. Saddam, being the strategic mastermind he believed himself to be, saw an opportunity. Iran was in disarray, trying to consolidate power after the revolution, and Saddam figured it was the perfect time to strike. He had grievances, of course, disputes over the Shat al-Arab waterway, a vital water route that both countries claimed, and the desire to assert dominance in the Gulf region. So, on September 22, 1980, Iraq launched a full-scale invasion of Iran, expecting a swift victory. But, as it turns out, Iran wasn't ready to roll over and play dead. The initial Iraqi offensive met with stiff resistance, and what was supposed to be a quick and decisive war dragged on. The Iranian military, though weakened by purges following the revolution, managed to rally. Volunteers, many motivated by religious and nationalistic fervor, joined the fight in droves. The war quickly settled into a grueling stalemate, with both sides throwing countless soldiers and resources into the fray. The Iran-Iraq War was a showcase of the worst kind of trench warfare, reminiscent of World War I. Both sides dug in along a front that stretched over a thousand kilometers from the southern marshlands to the mountainous north. This wasn't just a conventional war. It was a brutal, grinding conflict where human wave attacks, chemical weapons, and missile strikes became the norm. Cities were bombed. Civilians suffered and the death toll climbed steadily, reaching a staggering half a million to a million people. Saddam Hussein, ever the charismatic despot, tried to drum up support from the international community. And guess what? He succeeded to an extent. Many Western countries, including the United States, saw Iran as the bigger threat, given its anti-Western rhetoric and hostage-taking antics. So, in a move that will forever be a black mark on their diplomatic records, they provided various forms of support to Iraq. This included military intelligence, economic aid, and even materials that could be used to produce chemical weapons. Yes, the same weapons that Saddam used to devastating effect against Iranian troops and his own Kurdish population. The irony of it all? While the West was backing Iraq, Iran found its own unlikely allies. The Iranians turned to countries like Syria and Libya for support and managed to procure weapons and supplies from North Korea and China. Even Israel, which saw Iraq as a more immediate threat, provided covert assistance to Iran. War makes for strange bedfellows, doesn't it? As the years dragged on, both sides were battered and bruised, but neither was willing to back down. The war drained their economies, devastated their infrastructures, and left a lasting scar on their populations. The human cost was immense. Families torn apart, cities reduced to rubble, and a generation of young men lost to the battlefield. The war finally ground to a halt in August 1988, not because of a decisive victory by either side, but because both countries were utterly exhausted. The United Nations brokered a ceasefire, and the guns fell silent. The borders remained largely unchanged, and neither side could claim a clear victory. 
It was a draw, but the kind of draw where everyone loses. In the aftermath, both Iran and Iraq faced monumental challenges. Iran, under the continued leadership of Khomeini, until his death in 1989, turned inward, focusing on rebuilding and dealing with the war's social and economic aftermath. Iraq, meanwhile, was left with a massive debt and a restless, war-hardened population. Saddam's solution to this? Another military adventure, this time in Kuwait, which sparked the Gulf War of 1990-1991. But that, dear viewers, is another story for another day. So, what's the shocking truth behind the Iran-Iraq War? It's a tale of hubris and ambition, of ideological clashes and geopolitical maneuvering. It's a stark reminder of how quickly neighbors can become enemies and how the international community's involvement can muddy the waters even further. Most importantly, it's a testament to the human cost of war, a cost that, more often than not, leaves scars that last far longer than the conflict itself.